doing this because I love this game. I'm doing this because I've been paid to say good things about the game. The Brendan Fraser Lawbreakers for Nintendo. Get yours today! Yes, we're having a few issues right now with my speed niche because my speed niche is small, and that is why I want to kind of push this as a one fucking night kind of campaign for you guys. Because if you jump on and you play with my speed niche, you help it rise, you help it grow. I don't give a fuck. Oh, you can't say the F word. Fuck. And I put the book down and I'd be like, I want to make another billion dollar IP. Oh. If Honestly, if 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 Lawbreakers doesn't make it or doesn't do well or they turn the servers off, that's amazing because Lawbreakers is a shitty. Oh boy, you know what time of year it is. It's a place that hopes and dreams go to die. I'm talking about E3, the Electronic Expo or Entertainment Expo. I've already fucked it up. I'm a little a little loopy today got some allergies that are just kicking my ass all over the place. So I've taken plenty of allergy medication. That's a story I'm sticking to. Oh, there's a, lots of fun stuff in store. The E3 proper, or what's left of it, because it's been picked apart and shit upon by every company. <laughs> it's coming up. Well, what's left of it? EA, of course, is doing their own event. They've just completed that today. Oh boy, sports ball. You've got Sony that's not even showing up. I mean, really, at this... And Nintendo's doing their own thing. Really, at this point, you've got what? Bethesda, Ubisoft, Microsoft. That's kind of it. And, I mean, they're not even really at the same venue. E3 is... It, it might be going... It might be going into a ditch to die. I mean, we might have a limited amount of time left here for what we can enjoy from our uh, cringy once-a-year uh, expo into the digital entertainment realm. It's a sad, sad thought. I have many fond memories of what E3 was like, anxiously awaiting, anticipating how fucking horrible it was going to be. Presenters that didn't understand what they were talking about, e-celebrities <laughs> that couldn't read fucking cue cards to save their life. Many fond memories of just uncomfortable moments and really shitty products all being rolled out within one week. And that might be going away, and we might be seeing the end of that. So. I want to enjoy it while we can. So we got a lot, of, a lot of shit to cover. Are you excited, Chad? Are you fucking excited for E3? Or what's left of it? <laughs> Are you excited to stand over its corpse and maybe take a shit on its face? You know, let it go out with some style? I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one here. Sad flex? When people saying dead? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking... Yes, we, I see some people saying Todd lies incoming. Well, we're covering everything. Got a lot of shit coming up. Talk about the uh, leaks that have already come out, uh, mainly from Bandai Namco. Talk about what EA did. Talk about Stadia, because Google, of course, tried to beat everybody to the punch. Watchdogs. There's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of fucking shit coming up. A lot of Fs. A lot of Fs. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. It's it's going the way of the fucking dinosaurs. What are you going to do? You're just going to have to live with it, I guess. So, how, how should we start this? What should we start with? Well, let's do it with EA. You know what? We could do Stadia, but I'm going to do EA, or EA because, of course, they just started today. Do it while it's fresh. Who doesn't love sports? I think they had about 50,000 people tune in at the beginning of this abomination of a fucking E3 stream. And they, they, tried, to, uh, they tried to alter it, tamper with the uh, formula a little bit, try to get people interested. If you've ever watched an E3 uh, presentation from EA, you probably are well aware that it's very corporate culture heavy. Uh, usually people in suits giving speeches, uh, and they fucking hate their customers, and they're just completely disconnected. They don't really give a shit. So <laughs> it's contempt, especially when an uh, EA employee will go to another, another presentation, like if an EA guy shows up at Nintendo or whatever. They're always such massive cunts. They hate it. So they tried to be a little different this year. I mean, sure, it wasn't sports, 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 loot box, and sports, sports. They tried to hit it heavy out of the gate with shit that wasn't just FIFA and just John Madden. Not that it fucking helped. I think they showed off a total of six things that everybody was already well aware of. There were no surprises. 
when it came to what EA or uh, what EA was presenting today. Very fucking disappointing. I'll be honest. Even even for EA, I, I guess you can't go into this uh, presentation thinking it's going to be good because it never is going to be good. It's always going to be lacking, pure unfettered dog shit. I don't care about hand egg. Stop dedicating five hour blocks to hand egg. And I could give two flying fucks about soccer. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, I get it. FIFA's popular all over the world. Brazilians love that shit. South Americans set their clock by these releases. I get it. I don't care. I want video games, EA. Video games that aren't atrocious. Looking at you, Anthem. I want some fucking quality. It's my fault. Tune in, if you tune into an EA presentation expecting anything other than a sports focus, uh, you're, you're dead wrong. You've got one thing waiting for you when you... When you tune in to watch these dumb motherfuckers. Sports. 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 That's that's about the gist of their audience. That's what awaits you. And they know it too. They tried starting off differently. They were going to come out of the uh, gate strong, give a little bit of Star Wars to the people. Everybody, oh my god, Star Wars fall in order. Oh, my dick's getting hard. I love that nerd shit, EA. Oh, butter me up. Butter me up with that Jedi crap. And even when they were doing this, the fucking host looks <laughs> he looks at the camera and he fucking says this. It's just, I think it encapsulates EA entirely and their audience and they know, in their fucking souls they know. For somebody watching right now who's just a FIFA fan, they don't know anything. What is happening? What is this game all about, Vince? Yeah, what is, what is that Star Wars shit about, nerd? I've never... What is it? You you got a couple of light bright sticks. You're waving those wands at each other. Is this like Harry Potter? All right, where's the football come in? How many soccer balls are involved in this Star Wars shit, nerd? <laughs> Our audience is bored to tears with this Star Wars shit. We, we, need, we need a little more oomph. God, what a disappointment. I don't know if anybody really watched the Star Wars Fallen Order trailer yet. They put up about 14 to 15 minutes of Raw. Uncut game footage. Not not looking good. I'm going to be honest with you. In fact, let me see. I think I've got the trailer in here. Let me just... Okay, there we go. Sorry, had to adjust a few things. There we go. All right, we're good. Boomer's getting it. I'm blaming it on the suit effect. This game looks so fucking boring. Painfully boring. It just, it's slow and it's sluggish. And it has a bunch of mechanics in there that you wouldn't think would be needed in a fucking Star Wars game. I'm not Indiana Jones. I'm not going to the fucking Temple of Doom. Nor am I Nathan Drake looking to collect treasures with this Tomb Raider ripoff bullshit. <laughs> because what do you think Star Wars Jedi you immediately think swinging on vines and wall climbing. We need that. We need to stick that into the fucking game. You can already tell it's story heavy. And when it gets to the combat, god damn is it bad. You've got stormtroopers who can't hit shit anyway. I mean, that's canonical. But they're slow as fuck. And they had to make them even slower because you need to use your Star Wars uh, deflection with your little magic light bright wand. So it's just... It's like you're covered in molasses. You're running through tar paper when you're in these fucking fights. <laughs> they, they want to introduce you to the Star Wars universe. So what do they show off as their 15-minute demonstration of this atrocious video game? Well, they put you on a fucking planet, and then they make you fight giant beetles and spiders and bugs. I, you know, maybe I'm too out of touch with this shit nowadays. I don't know. Maybe I'm just old. But I don't remember... <laughs> I don't remember that being a real heavy part of the fucking story of Star Wars. Not, I'm not remembering Darth Vader or Luke having to fight off a couple of uh, uh, beehives as they're in the middle of their intergalactic shit fit with one another. It's just, it's modern gaming it, 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 at its core. I don't know. It really speaks to what's wrong with video games, I guess. Oh, look at that. That's great. Hey, use your lightsaber as a flashlight. That's what we all need. That's a mechanic that needed to be coded into your fucking video game. <laughs> God. 
this is going to bomb. I'm going to put that out there. I don't think this is going to do very well. Maybe the game is pretty decent, but they really picked the worst thing to show it off. Just very boring, very slow, very sluggish. I don't know how many people were looking forward to it. I, I, I taper down those expectations. That hype might want to bring it down a notch. I know you tell me, Chad, are you excited? <laughs> are you excited to watch Darth Vader fight scorpions? Are you ready for, for Luke to do battle with moths? Like, we, <laughs> that right there, I think, uh, on screen is a good example of what I'm talking about. Put an environmental hazard in the way just to show off a force power. But what's, what is the point of that? Why are you stopping my game flow to have me push a fucking pipe down so I can get closer to the dumb fucking stormtroopers? I, I just want to slice shit up. I want to levitate people and throw them off a bridge. I want to gut motherfuckers with my light bright sword. Oh, here we go. Here's the deflection shit, where it looks like you've joined a marching band. Look at how slow... Okay, you see how slow he's shooting? He has to... <laughs> they have slow-mo, too! It's like, maybe this isn't retardedly slow enough for you. Let's slow it down even more. Even more to make it more insufferable to the poor son of a bitch that accidentally rented this or bought it, thinking it was going to be a fun video game. Just dog shit. But, of course, I wasn't expecting much from EA, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm sure they put their heart and souls into it. it oh, what a pretty-looking game. A uh, pretty-looking game doesn't mean much if it looks like it's shit. This combat doesn't look great. I, just take a look. I mean, you're watching it on screen right now. <laughs> like, I just... Uh, it feels like if you watch two minutes of the combat, you've seen all of the combat in the entire game. Even with their progression system of force powers... I, there's nothing here that excites me. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it's not the game that's exciting the people that are hosting the EA press conference. I think they might be excited by something else. Yes, that's what I wanted, the little boy! <laughs> I, don't, I, didn't, I don't know if you caught that. Let me, let's play that one again. Yes, that's what I wanted, the little boy! I love the look of just the mortified look on his face like he realizes after he said that out loud what he just said in front of a live studio audience that's being fucking broadcast to 50,000 people on YouTube and 60,000 people on Twitch. You know, just drop that line out in front of 110,000 fucking viewers. Yes, that's <laughs> Kill what your I wanted, career. little boy. Oh, God. Oh, the realization that yes, hits. Yes, that's what I wanted, the little boy. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Oh, my God. And, of course, once you get done with Star Wars, and it was bad, I felt bad for the guy. I felt bad for the developers up on stage. Listen, it doesn't appeal to me. It looks like it's a slow game. It looks like it's probably not fun. They seem like okay guys. They seem like they put their their heart and soul into it. But they were getting no love from the audience. So, of course, they move on from Star Wars. They've got, like, three games to pre uh, present that's not sports ball. The next one. Apex Legends. What What's the big news for Apex Legends? I don't even play it. Oh, Season 2 is coming. Okay, great. What's Season 2? Oh, we're going to give you one new weapon and one new character. Oh, well, shit, I needed 30 minutes to hear that you're giving me one character and one weapon. Yeah, a whole 30 minutes to explain that. <laughs> and then they drop I the character on trailer. Let me just turn this down a little bit. Okay. They drop the character trailer, and it's some light, bright bitch. I don't know. Wall socket, wallpaper. What is it? Watson? Watson. Oh, uh, you know, she's she's a defensive player. Puts up little poles and shit to put up grids to defend your area. I don't fucking know how this game plays. I don't really care. The only thing that really caught my attention is this. It looks like she's wearing a diaper. I know video games have gotten very progressive in the modern age. Uh, you know, Overwatch, Blizzard really leading that charge. But Watson looks like she dropped a deuce in her pants. Now I, you know, if you look at, if you look around the crotch area, it gets pretty fluffy. I'm saying this bitch is wearing a diaper, and she shits herself in the middle of combat, and that's all I can think of now. Whenever I see Watson, and her fucking parka jacket, and her mechanic overalls, is she's hiding her shame, some bizarre sexual kink that she's really deep into, just dropping deuces left and right. That's what we want on the field. Oh, and of course. As if, as if the disappointing news of Apex Legends, of what, an update of one weapon and one character, and Star Wars not looking appealing, 
you've got to have the Sims. you got to get some Sims news in there. Let's make a game franchise that becomes wildly popular, and then on the fourth installment of it, rip out all the features people like, and charge them to put those features back in as individual DLCs. Brilliant strategy. Well, this year, they've really outdone themselves. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let them tell you. <laughs> I'll let them tell you their amazing, amazing approach to the new Sims DLC. Hello there, everyone. I'm Joey Grisapa, and if you didn't know, I absolutely love The Sims, and I'm so excited to announce this upcoming partnership with one of my favorite games. So this summer, The Sims is actually partnering with the amazing It Gets Better project. As part of this partnership with It Gets Better, Sims is going to be releasing pride items in all The Sims products in the next few months. There's going to be a variety of It Gets Better and Pride clothing in Sims Free Play, the Sims Mobile app, and Sims 4. There's even a gender neutral bathroom in Sims 4, along with a bunch of other items to show off your pride. Thanks so much for letting me share this news with everyone. Now go out and enjoy your EA Play. You see how it all circles back into itself. You're wondering, why did he play that Lawbreakers clip? What, what's the point of that? Gender neutral bathrooms. That's what The Sims needed. Really, that was the feature I think everybody was just clamoring for, jumping at the bit to get those gender-neutral bathrooms. Hey, everybody, it's Sassy Gay Guy. Here comes some gender-neutral bathrooms. Fantastic. <laughs> How much are you going to charge for that, $30? Of course, they put other features in there. You get a, a little island paradise, some mermaids, your gender-neutral bathrooms, and, of course, the pollution mechanic. Who doesn't love environmentalism in their video game? It really, sounds like a fucking winner all around. Those those three or four features, that sold me. Here's my credit card, EA. Let me, let me buy your atrocious fucking video game. This company is horrible. <laughs> uh, I would suggest, you know, after this, before the proper E3 starts. I know a lot of people talk about loot boxes and microtransactions and bilking people for features and the way that they run their business. Go look this up. This is a SlideShare presentation from a guy named Ben Cousins. He worked at EA for a, 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 a subsidiary of EA called Easy. They ran Battlefield Heroes. It's like a 40-minute long video. And you will hear straight from the horse's mouth what they think of you as a customer. I've included the URL link at the top. They think you're fucking stupid. They laugh about when you get upset with the shit they do. They talk about how they don't give two fucks how they'll shove anything up your ass for a nickel, and how they'll make you like it. They also talk about how they manipulate people on forums and in discussions and on reviews. This dude is 100% honest about the way EA thinks of you as a customer. <laughs> it's, it's a magical fucking video. They have no respect for you. And of course, I have no respect for Mr. Uh, football. Gotta have that. Gotta have, gotta have me some John Madden. God damn, I love my Madden 20. My Madden 20, my FIFA 20, that's all I want. Give me my give me my sports. Fuck everything else. What a disaster. It was a horrible show. They had 50,000 people watching when they were actually talking about video games. And the moment they switched over to the sports shit, about 30,000 of them left. That's that's pretty telling. I mean, the people tuning in for these fucking presentations are probably looking to find out about video games, but I don't think EA gives a shit about video games. They want to sell you some branded installment product and then shove microtransactions up your ass and occasionally link it into some political statement with their gender-neutral bathrooms. That's that's what everybody's clamoring for. Give me those gender-neutral bathrooms. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm actually glad EA didn't show up at E3 proper. <laughs> they probably did it because they didn't want to get an award for being the worst presentation. Of course, they kind of fucked up because now they're outside of E3. So there should be a separate award for worst presentation around E3 rather than inside of it. It'll be what? Them competing with, I guess, Nintendo and Google. Oh boy. Google Stadia. I hope you're ready for the hotness. The new the new thing that's coming. The Stadia. Oh, there was a clip I wanted to show where it showed the latency and lag and the guy hitting the button and it took like 10 seconds for the fucking thing to respond on, or on screen, but whatever. Let's talk about Google's big announcement. Their new streaming video game service. Everybody thought it was going to be Netflix. Oh, I'm going to pay $10 a month and have access to any video game I want, and that's going to be that. 
be just like a movie service. Fucking wrong. Not at all. Not at all how it's going to work. You have to pay them money for the service, and on top of that, you have to buy the video game. So let me ask you, what makes this fucking service any different than a Steam or an Epic Game Store or a Origin or you know any of those services? Oh, well, you can stream it, right? They're going to they're gonna run everything on ultra settings with enormous latency. So <laughs> let's look at their amazing claims of complete, utter bullshit. This is what they said. Stadia will support a range of resolutions and internet speeds. And here you go. Based on your connection speed, this is what you can expect. So if you're getting 20, uh, you know, if, if you're getting around 20 in the middle there, 1080p video, 60 frames a second, 5.1 surround sound, 35, you're going to get 4K video. Anything less than that, a 10 to a 5 to a 10, 720p. I don't believe any of that. When they were doing their presentation, they are streaming this on YouTube to uh, the 120,000 people who were watching, the fucking stream cut out repeatedly repeatedly kept dying out on them. And of course, there's the pricing. Well, what's the price? Well, it's $10 a month. <laughs> it's $10 a month for the basic service. But of course, you need you need more than that. You can't just do $10 a month. You need, you need that hot controller. What a bargain. A Chromecast and a controller for the low price of $130. Oh, wow. Sign me up for 10 Sign me up for 10 with your amazing service, Google Stadia. Jesus. They, they ripped off, uh, essentially, they ripped off a Nintendo controller, adjusted the button layout with the analog stick and the D-pad, so it's more like a, uh, an Xbox controller, and then are charging $75 to $80 for the controller, and then the Chromecast itself is, what, 40 50 bucks? I don't fucking know. So the appeal of this is, you sign up for their service, you pay them $10 a month, then you buy your video game at full price, and then you can stream that game on any device, your television, your computer, your tablet, your phone. Of course, going back to, what is it? Uh, going back to this, I don't know, you know, 4G phones aren't really going above the 10 limit, are they? With their connection speeds. So I, I don't know what the appeal of that is. Spending, you, know, you got to lug this fucking controller around? Maybe. Maybe that's what they're going for. Who knows? Well, let's see. What else? <laughs> this is such a disaster. Jesus Christ. I don't know who's in charge of marketing at this company either, but they need to get fired. This was, this is on their website. How absurd is this for a bullet point when you're selling a fucking product? Buy games whenever you want. Yes. Really. Was there something prohibiting me from doing that? I couldn't go on fucking Amazon to buy my games. I couldn't go on Steam to do it. Can't walk my fat ass up to Walmart to buy one. <laughs> is, there, is there a prohibition on buying games and Google's the only one letting me do it? What a weird selling point that is. Buy games whatever you want. No shit, Google. We've all been doing that for the past 30 fucking years. I was, I was at a bullet point. Oh, fucking, I forgot. They're giving you one free game. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what the amazing free game, if you pay $130 for this fucking service and $10 a month, Destiny 2? Oh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one all the gamers want. That's the hot ticket. Give me some Destiny 2. Oh, I'm dying for some Destiny 2. Oh, they got all the companies involved. Everybody's going to be making games for this. Or more than like porting it over. <laughs> all these uh, different, you know, brands, all the different games, all the different series, all the different companies. You can pay full price on Google Stadia service to buy the game and then only stream it when you're online. You know, when Microsoft was initially releasing the Xbox One, and they said it was going to be an always online device, People hated that idea. And yet, Google is essentially doing the same thing. They're not offering you a Netflix-like service. You've got to buy the fucking game. But if you can't connect to the internet, you can't play what you fucking bought. There's no offline mode. So, <laughs> what are you doing? What's the benefit of this? Oh, and then, of course, let's not forget all the amazing services Google has had before that have been discontinued. Numerous ones. It's just... If you buy into this and you drop hundreds of dollars on software and you pay the $10 a month for their service, and if you luck out and your internet is stable enough and fast enough to actually hit what they're saying, and they have the technology in place to do better than old services like OnLive did where there's not going to be a shit ton of lag, or lag and latency, if they discontinue this, you're, you're fucked. Your games are gone. 
That's not to say that that's not a likely scenario with other services, but there's no offline mode. And Google is not uh, does not have the best track record when it comes to keeping their shit online. I think it would be a mistake. I'm not I'm not seeing the selling point. They're not selling it to me. They had one game, one game, that uh, was unique to their platform. Uh, Guilt. I think it's like G Y L T. Looks like a Disney version of Silent Hill. Actually, looks pretty cool. But they didn't even really draw attention to that being an exclusive. Everything else is something that's been released everywhere else. They have nothing unique to their platform. So it's an untested technology. You still have to pay full price for your game. You have to pay on top of that for the streaming service of $10. You have to pay $80 for the fucking controller. There's one exclusive. And they have a history of fucking up other services. Not exactly speaking to the strength of why uh, their company is going to do well, why this product is going to do well and why I would want to pay them money to use it. Shameful. Shameful, Stadia. You tell me, chat. how hyped are you? How hyped are you for the Stadia? I'm going to, I'm going to pull the crowd here a little bit. You tell me, guys. <laughs> no, I don't believe the title was uh, White Guilt. Would have been a very different game altogether, wouldn't it? Oh, I see. There's there's some there's some links getting spammed. I I don't know what to tell you. Don't click on them. That would be my that would be my fucking suggestion. Don't click on them. Oh, nobody's looking hyped for this. I think this is going to be a massive bomb. I mean, that, you know, I was joking earlier saying it was like the Ouya to you, but this is going to do worse than on life. I I can't imagine that this is going to do well for them. And I think Microsoft is poised, uh, really good going into E3 to be able to uh, show off their. Their X gaming, X cloud shit. People have been saying that service is going to be just miles beyond what Google's talking about. Much, much better. Much more flushed out. And I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, they, they, by trying to go early, it makes me think that they know they're in a bad position. You want a new Sega console? Somebody said in chat. Uh, we all want a new Sega console. Good God. Well, at least we got <laughs> some of the worst shit out of the way. Google's done. They're not going to bother anybody anymore. EA's done. They're not going to bother anybody anymore. Now we get into the more interesting stuff. We're going to talk about some of the leaks that have come out, some of the speculation that's going forward, some of the interesting shit that's coming up. Before I do that, I'm going to collect my shekels here. I'm going to read some super chats. Not a ton. I'm going to take a few minutes and read some, and then we will uh, continue on. I'll get to the rest, of course, later at the end of the stream. But, uh, I'll pull the audience a little. I see what everybody's thinking. Uh, from Jay Big Ups to the Lily Pad Gang, Baton Rouge and Egg Gang. From Lost Angeles, Airs Air, Unite, Airs Rise Up, pay, uh, Pig Ups Jimmy. Well, thank you. From ComWest907, soon you won't be able to buy video on Sabbath. From Red Zeno, I think if you play Apex, you might like Caustic. His whole deal is gassing women and minorities. I wouldn't know. I've never played Apex Legends. And after watching their uh, rollout of Season 2, nothing's really drawing me in. The thought of one extra gun and one extra skin not really tickling my fancy. From Ellie Perez, hey, Mr. Medicar. Barely got my first job and will be finishing school with an associate's degree on applied science. Any advice? <laughs> advice on what? What would you like advice? I don't know where to tell you to get a job if that's what you're asking me. I just work hard, build up a resume. Your first couple of jobs are going to be shit. That, that's how it works. Every time you get out of college, regardless of the degree you get, you're, you're the new fish. You are the person that's going to be taken advantage of, regardless of the field you're going into. You're going to be a bitch, essentially, for about a year or two. You just got to grin and bear it. Get a little bit of experience on that resume. It's not going to be the first or second job you get. Those first couple years are going to suck ass. It's the job after that, you know, that new period, that grace period is when you're really going to build a career. So just be prepared to be treated like shit and underpaid. But it will eventually get better. From Prophet Mohammed, also with Stadia, it eats up about a terabyte of data in a couple of weeks, which most I or most US ISPs cap you on, and then hobble you at. So you're paying for unlimited weeks worth of gaming before you blow your monthly data limit. Uh, very true. 
Google actually had a response for this. When people brought up, what about data caps in regards to your shitty new service? They said, oh, well, it'll force ISPs to change their position. They have no solution. They think if you sign up to use their product, that that's going to force an ISP to do something. I don't think Google really understands ISPs aren't going to be forced to do shit. And <laughs> they're not even trying to trying to work out a deal so people don't get fucked on data caps. From AA, got heart problems, rip army career. I uh, love your stuff, Jim. Press R for retards rising up. From Tanner Hunter, I get 1.5, uh, no stadia for me. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't think you're going to be missing out on much. Uh, I'll read five more here and jump back in. Mutant Joe, say it louder so the bigots can hear you. Uh, Jay Big Ups, wheelchair symbol. From Selenish Butts, I will shove my super chat in your donkey. Kill shot. Kenny, I'm going to go buy a bunch of pride flags and sims and then set my house on fire and take screenshots so I can simulate hate crimes within the sims. From wheelchair symbol, Big Ops Rocky. And finally from Carnizzle, EA had a patent for dynamic difficulty adjustment, meaning the game, uh, meaning that the games on the fly will become easier or harder based on data, even if they're online. Uh, well, I would not be surprised by that. All right, let's see what we've got. You know, I want, you know I'm going to jump into Steam <clears throat> and talk about that a little bit because I want to talk about Boneworks. And we're going to actually look at a Boneworks video because uh, that's fucking amazing to me. Like, if anything's gotten me even a little bit interested in the concept of VR outside of maybe, like, Beat Saber for the novelty of it, uh, would be the shit the guys who are making Boneworks have been showing off. But let's, let's talk a little bit about Steam just for the fun of it. And Valve for a little, little bit. There we go. I love the fucking discussion forums on any game that you can go into. Look at this shit. Somebody, they're selling Octopath Traveler for $60 on Steam, which is $10 more than they were selling it on the fucking Switch. So they've bumped the price up for an arbitrary bullshit reason. <laughs> somebody, somebody goes in and says, what the fuck's with the price tag? Banned. Get your ass out of here. You're banned instantly. What are you asking about prices? Pay the $60. You pay that $60, you smile when you pay it. I'm going to spit in your fucking mouth. Get your wallet out. <laughs> God, it's a no man's land. You know, I, I think the one thing that really amazes me, and I think uh, don't, people don't really appreciate Gabe for this, is he's a fucking genius. He opened up essentially porn on Steam. And then he started pushing VR. He knows what he's doing. How are you going to compete with Epic and Origin and Ubisoft and all these other platforms? Pornography. I'm going to put up the dirtiest, nastiest, hentai-based shit that can be stomached on the internet. And I'm going to slap a fucking VR headset on you. I'm going to make you masturbate till you pass out from dehydration. That is what our boy is up to. So when you go, when you go on to Steam, see games like this. Super Naughty Mate. Oh. Super Naughty Mate. It's an adult-only video game. Now, <laughs> here's what I find funny about this. Steam doesn't really have... Like, their algorithms that exist when they're trying to match up a game you're looking at to a game you might have played or a game that could somewhat be related to it isn't really refined properly when it comes to porn games. <laughs> so, okay, Super Naughty Mate, about a big-titted chick who's your maid and does naughty super things with you. And you know, they're like, well, maybe I'm going to buy this. Maybe I'm going to buy some pornography. Well, what's what's this similar to? <laughs> take, I would just take a minute. See if you notice. See if you notice what's wrong here. Just, I'm going to say on the right side of the screen. I'm going to give you a minute, chat. I don't want to spoil it. Just see if anything strikes you with this porn game as being a little fucking weird. Are you, are you seeing it yet? Is it jumping out at you? On the right-hand side there, under is this game relevant to you? Similar games you might have played before. Berserk. <laughs> fucking Berserk? How is this similar to fucking Berserk? There's only... There's, there's legitimately only one thing I can think of for what that game could ever possibly have in common with Berserk. And I don't know if Gabe has the balls to put that on Steam. 
there's, there's, there's no violence or combat in this game. It leaves me to the conclusion that there's only one feature this video game about Naughty Maids could have in common with fucking Berserk. <laughs> I think it might get Gabe arrested for selling that to people. I don't. Am I alone here? Yes, yes, yeah. No, it's I'm not, I'm not making it up. That really is the related game category. Fucking berserk. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what are you doing? Let me see if I can okay, let me I'm gonna pull this up now. I'm fairly certain I, I saved it. Okay. Get that set up here. I wanna show Boneworks. Cause you know, not a not a ton of it, but just some of it. Turn the volume down. This is a video they just released today. Uh, VR games are VR games. But the thing that really surprises me about this and actually gets me interested in the concept of VR, I mean, it, it's like a weird amalgamation. It's like a Frankenstein game that combines all the funny shit that you see in, like, VR chats, you know, that kind of freedom and ridiculous crap that you can do in those, with an FPS game and with a weird combat system. Like, this, this kind of shit feels like it's the sort of thing that's going to be uh, you know, the next step in gaming. I know that sounds so dumb to say. It's the evolution of video gaming. But <laughs> I get that feeling. I get that feeling kind of like when I had that feeling when you went from like a PS1 to a PS2. You're like, holy shit. That's kind of a big leap. Or when you played uh, Super Mario 64 for the first time and you're doing actual 3D, running around a 3D world, and you're like, fuck. This is much different than what I was used to. It, it feels like that kind of leap. So let me see if I can get this set up. Hopefully it pulls up the right window. Take a little a little look at Boneworks. Because uh, I'm not sure exactly when this releases, but I, I have a feeling probably within the next six months to a year. Uh, there we go. All right, this is Boneworks. Should be set up right. Okay. Let's take a look. <laughs> you know? I think he's using the Valve Index uh, as the, the VR kit. I don't know. I'm behind the curve on all the VR shit. I know there's the Oculus and all of that shit, but I don't have any of these. I just, I like the idea that there's hand-to-hand -hand combat where you can hold enemies. Where you can get into, like, fights like this. And just hold them. And fucking smack them around. Look at him, he's holding his arms. Like, the idea of that is fucking weird to me. <laughs> You've got a flailing opponent, and you just fucking smack him in his face. And just gut shot him. It's not a fucking thing he can do. But it's once they start getting into the weapons, this shit I love. It's locational damage, and you can gimp your opponents. So if you, like, hit him in the fucking shin, his shin gets fucked up and he starts getting gimpy. <laughs> it's just... I'm trying to imagine a GTA game like this. Imagine you're running around the streets of fucking San Andreas, just beating the shit out of people with a baseball bat. Fucking crack his skull open. And there isn't a fucking thing he can do about it. <laughs> Just sucker punch people. No reason. Polar bear him. Just polar bear the motherfucker. And then kill him. Right in his face. But once they start playing with the physics, that's when the shit gets fun. Let me, let me skip ahead a little bit here. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Like, you can shoot people in an FPS. That's nothing new. It's just the weird ability to manipulate the orientation of your enemies, and the weapons you're using to do it. This is a weird combination of fucked up shit you can do. Like he's recreating John Wick here. <laughs> Look at him struggle! He's gonna shove his stupid little AI face right into that fucking knife. <laughs> How do you like it, bitch? Oh, I can imagine there being a lot of possibilities with this. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Oh, I gotta show you. Smack him on his ass. That's what he deserves. Okay, where is the fucking... The, the shit they do... <laughs> Beat him with a bat. Who gives a shit? Oh, yeah, he starts pulling out kunais. Just whatever. Oh, this game is fucking amazing. I, I mean, it's a, it's a demonstration hallway. They're just setting up random opponents and letting, you know, fucking around to show off the physics and how you interact with the game. <laughs> but it's so dumb. I fucking love it. But it's once they start doing the balloon stuff. That's so amazing. Hold on. Because it's got... it's all, Oh, he slows down. Yeah, we'll do this. Stumbling backwards. 
Survived your oh, super dude, he mega survived. Wait, deep. Pick him up and body slam him. He survived. You know what? I learned this when I was young. Sweep the legs. Nut shot. the legs. Three sixty nut shot. Three sixty nut shot. Straight out. Oh, watch out, Dave. Watch out. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Sorry. All right, you wanna jump in here? I'd recommend. Alright, I fucking, I fucking love this. This is so stupid. This is so fucking stupidly fun looking. <laughs> it's the dumb shit they do to fucking enemies with balloons. Uh, where's, there's, there's, uh, they test out like, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. I'll let him do it. I'll let him show you. Oh, he's so light now. <laughs> he's like a little baby. <laughs> Yeah, look how strong I is. Just frame the, just paint the lines out, and everyone be like, "Dang, Nico's so strong." Brandon, are these enemies gonna look like this? Uh, when you first time you see them, this is what they look <laughs> okay, like. Okay, cool. And this is their first evolve. stage. I they, see. I they, see. They, they evolve. Nice. He's a human lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Wait, I'm curious. If I just stick it in a little bit, will the the force of his body push it in the rest of the way? But get low, get low. Oh! No! <laughs> Ow! Wee! I thought I made it. I think uh, I was sick. Uh, yeah, this is legit my favorite part. <laughs> if anything's gonna make me get a VR headset, I this is just to do this. To take an enemy and do this to them. And <laughs> watch them struggle with it. It's so stupid. This is so stupidly fun looking. <laughs> Yeah. He's a little baby! <laughs> he's a little baby! He's a little baby, he figured it out. Oh, he's getting tripped up on the wires! Wow, what? look at this guy! That's so this is cool. crazy. Whoa, this every is time really he tries nuts. to stand up, there's way more balloons on his legs. <laughs> <laughs> they just pull straight up. Under. Spank him like a baby. Treat him like the baby he is. He's kicking, he's like, Big I don't want to die for change. Wah! <laughs> Dude, this would give Sam PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't want to. I don't wanna. Yeah, spank that boy. He's been a bad boy. Right, I got, a, I got a cool idea. No. A cool, gnarly idea. Because it just uses these sensors, and then it detects rather than being like, oh, I fell down. Now I need to get up. Instead, it's oh, my center of mass is tipped over, so I need to perform this action to try to correct that. Oh, up a little, a little bit heavier. Oh, oh look no. Up, look up a little bit more. Look up a little more. Look up. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh no! Oh no, he's coming down! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! That's pretty intense. Wait, check this out, check this out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no! Dude, I just body slammed him onto that sword. <laughs> wait, now force grab the sword. Oh, it's like stuck in it. You wait, stuck through his body and his leg? Oh, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're real pull messed his up, leg man. out. Oh, you what? stab a guy and you could pull the sword through. All right, I just I had to show that off. I I know it's E3, all the E3 stuff is coming up, but this is fucking extraordinary to me. <laughs> it looks so goddamn fun. I don't even I don't even care what the game really is. I just want to go in and fuck with the uh, enemy characters, tie balloons to them, start shoving swords in their ass, spanking them for no fucking apparent reason. Like this is a shit VR was made for. Just stupid things. <laughs> I don't even know what this game is going to be when it's complete. But it looks entertaining. I, I love the fucking locational damage. <laughs> he can't use his arms because he fucked his elbows up. <laughs> Look at him. It's just cruel. It's just plain mean to be mean, which is fucking amazing. Just bully enemies. Fantastic. All right, let's... <laughs> Let's move on. Hold on. Oh, where are we here? There we go. Turn that off. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me, chat. What do you think? You got an interest? Are you interested in the possibility of Boneworks on VR? Like, that shit amazes me. Like, they're doing really crazy shit. Like, they, 
they had a couple enemies in the hallway, and he took a long sword and he ran at them, and he speared both of them with the sword, and then they flailed around trying to like separate themselves and were unable to do it, putting balloons on their feet and spanking their ass for no reason. I don't know, I don't know how that's gonna work into a game level, but it looks fucking great. Right? Yeah. Like that's that's what my that's uh, to me that's what VR should be. Stupid shit like that, fully flushed out with actual physics in game, with dumb stuff that you can do. That shit makes me want to get into VR. All this uh, press a button to teleport over here and hit a button again to teleport again. That I hate that shit. I want to be able to run around a level and abuse enemy characters. I want to do really fucked up dumb shit in ways that you couldn't manipulate if you weren't in a VR environment. That shit looks amazing. And also, imagine the porn mods. Just take a minute to think about the porn mods for a game like that. <laughs> and the disgusting, degenerate shit you're going to be able to do in a video game. Okay. We talked... We, ta <laughs> we talked about... Um, oh, where, what should we go to next? I'm trying to think. I know. I know, uh, we're going to get, uh, actually, let me pull this up here. Uh, E3 report card. What are we expecting? What are we expecting going into E3? I don't know what your report cards look like. This one is fairly good. We've got, uh, of course, Xbox, Bethesda, Devolver, PC Gaming Show, Ubisoft, Square Enix, and Nintendo. They don't have Bandai Namco on there, but I think they're going to be doing their presentation during the Xbox show, especially based on the leaks that came out, as well as being a part of the Nintendo Direct. But th there's your, there are your boys. There are your seven companies. So let's start with Nintendo, I think. What are we expecting? What are our expectations, our hopes and dreams for Nintendo? Uh, going forward, this is what I'm, I'm looking at. This is, this is what I'm thinking. They need to show something. Some playable form of one of the games they've hyped up, which is either going to be Animal Crossing or Luigi's Mansion 3. It's got to be one of the two. I'm going to probably side with Luigi's Mansion 3. I think that's probably what they're going to focus on. I think Animal Crossing, you might get a really short trailer, and they might you know, push back the release date to next year. You're probably going to get Fire Emblem, of course, more footage of that. Some of the smaller stuff. Will they release Metroid Prime Trilogy? Are they going to hold it back for Metroid, or Metroid Prime 4? I don't know. People are saying, oh, well, Pikmin. There's going to be a Pikmin collection, the first three games, and maybe an announcement of Pikmin 4. This first half of the year, if you're a Nintendo Switch owner, has been horrible. It's been nightmarish. It has been a desolate wasteland of no video games. Nintendo needs to have something to announce at this fucking Direct at the tail end of E3. To have an impact and keep people interested. Whether that's a hardware revision, whether that's the release of new video games, they have to come out with something. Personally, I'd love to hear that they're going to release an F-Zero, but I'm not holding my breath for it. But there's got to be something. Now, because the Bando Namco, or, uh, Bandai Namco leaks, there is, at least, there is at least one thing. There's one thing we can say for sure that's probably going to be in that direct, which is a Switch release of Nino Kuni. Now, I don't know how well people are going to receive it. I don't know how well it runs, what the resolution is going to be set at, but there is a Switch version. Uh, it got leaked accidentally so that is coming out and I would expect that's going to be one of the games presented but outside of that outside of uh, Bandai they need something people pretty much are almost assured you're going to get a DLC character of course for Smash why wouldn't you that has to be included but what's that Smash character going to be I'll pull you chat you tell me I mean we've all seen the leaks we know how leaks work the worse the picture looks the more accurate it is the blurrier it gets, the more assured you are that it's real. That looks like a proper leak to me. That looks like the sort of leak I could put my faith into. <laughs> you tell me, what do you think they need to come out of the fucking gates with as far as that DLC character? I know there's a lot of Minecraft. I know there's a lot of Banjo. But uh, I, I don't know. What are you expecting? Steve for Smash? I've seen a lot of fucking Steves. Phoenix Wright? <laughs> Phoenix Wright? Forget that. No, you're never going to get that. Not going to happen. I'll call that right now. It ain't happening. Doom Guy, Halo, Master Chief? No. No, no, no. no. Seen a lot of Banjos and a lot of Steves. Goku. I'm pretty sure he said he was never going to put Goku or any anime character in this game. 
I'm fairly certain that's not going to fucking happen. Kingdom Hearts, yeah, I, I did see that. I did see a lot of people saying there's going to be a Kingdom Hearts character. I mean, it would fit with the Keyblade and all that gay shit. It does make sense on some level that that would be something they would fucking release. <laughs> some of these guesses, though, I'm going to be honest with you. There's no chance in hell that they're ever going to happen. Not a chance. It's false. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's a total fabrication. This one was invented by a writer. Just, it's not happening. Some of these characters here, pro Jared, I don't know, maybe he's going to fuck Princess Peach and make Mario cry so much he quits. He just walks off the stage and gives away stocks. I mean, I could see that happening. Dante? Which Dante? Dante or Dante? Which, which one are we going for from DMC? I don't know. I think... I think we've got enough Fire Emblem characters in Smash at this point. You got like 32 of them. We need some more Zelda representation. We need some more Zelda representation. I'm talking about Big Pimp and Link. We need Big Pimp and Link in this fucking game. Because if they release another fucking Fire Emblem character, people are going to riot. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they can afford to do it. I know it's supposed to be all third-party outside companies. So I think your top three contenders are Banjo, maybe Kingdom Hearts character, and Minecraft Steve. <laughs> I don't know what else you're thinking of. Gino, you know, forget that. I see people in chat saying that never going to happen. Again, some of these guesses, I hate to tell you. Not a chance. It's false. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's a total fabrication. This one was invented by a writer. You just need to you need to reel those expectations in a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna be frankly honest with you. There's no way that's gonna fucking happen. I'll pull that down. So when it comes to Nintendo, yeah, let's do this. What are we? My hopes, F Zero. My expectations, F-Zero is not going to happen. But they'll show off some Luigi's Mansion 3. They'll show off the Metroid Prime Trilogy. They'll re-release or remaster a couple of the Pikmin games. The, what was it, the Shin Megami Tensei game will get shown off. And maybe, maybe they'll pull out a surprise. I mean, we know Nino Kuni is going to be on there. But they, they need something. That first of that, or the first half of the year, they can't, they can't repeat that again. It was atrocious. Just shameful as fuck. <laughs> okay, let's... I, that's my... That's, uh, we can move past that. So, I, you know, I'll move on to Bandai Namco. I, I'm fairly certain the majority of this shit's going to be in the Xbox presentation anyway, so it plays nicely into it. So what do we have? Well, Microsoft, they're going to probably at least talk about the specs of the two new systems. Probably talk about the pricing of the two new systems. Probably talk about their cloud gaming service. There's supposed to be 14 titles they're going to be focusing on. Uh, chances are these are going to be some of the Bandai Namco ones. So what are the three that leaked were, of course, Nino Kune. There's going to be a remaster for Xbox as well as a original edition for the Switch. George R.R. R. Martin and, of course, FromSoft with Elden Rings. Now, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. It'll have FromSoft co uh, combat, so it'll be like Dark Souls. And then George R.R. R. Martin is going to be writing it. So, of course, we'll have, what, 10 chapters of an 11-chapter game dedicated to talking about a big bad threat that's going to show up, followed by one chapter of a big bad threat, and lots of limp, unerect penises. That's when I think George R.R. R. Martin, and I think Game of Thrones, I think limp, unerect penises. And, of course, Winter is Coming being repeated for, like, seven books and eight seasons of the fucking show. <laughs> I don't. Why they hired him as a writer? They wanted a more a flushed out story. I'm guessing. I, I don't know what to expect. I really don't know what this is going to be. Hopefully, it's not complete and utter dog shit. And of course, the other game 
a Tails game, which looks fucking amazing based off the screenshots. Like, there are a couple others, but I, I put one up here. Looks fucking phenomenal. I haven't really, I'm not super into the Tails series. I own a few of them. I, you know, I, I remember fondly playing, I think it was Tales of Symphonia on the GameCube. So, I, I mean, I'm kind of hyped for it. It looks good. Uh, obviously, it looks like something that's going to be on either PS4 or Xbox, or maybe even the next iteration of consoles, whatever they are next year. But more than likely, Elden Rings and Tales will be shown off, or at least talked about, during Microsoft's presentation. That's that's my guess. As far as what else is going to be showing up at Microsoft, uh, I mean, what what do you really have to look forward to? Okay, so you've got the console hardware, you've got the, the cloud gaming service features, Halo, um, I'm not sure how much of it's going to be shown, but they'll show something. A uh, bunch of Gears of War 5 shit, obviously, is going to be shown. Um, are we going to get new titles? I mean, the problem with Microsoft showing off new games is those fucking new games never happen. Remember Scalebound? Never happened. Phantom Dust? Never happened. They'll show you a CG trailer, get you really interested, thinking you're going to get some new IP or a follow-up on a, a traditional, older, well-liked IP, and then it dies, it withers on the vine. So unless it's an established series, you're not really going to get anything. I mean, that leaves Halo, Gears of War, and Forza. And maybe like one or two other things. So they, again, it feels like everybody kind of going into this needs to show off a lot of shit. Nintendo desperately needs it. Microsoft does. I mean, when you look at total console sales around the world, Microsoft's sitting at what, like 45 to 50 million? Nintendo's at like 35 million. So it's their fourth best-selling console. They're going to outstrip Microsoft pretty quick here as far as the total amount of consoles sold. So, I mean, they're, they're lagging behind Sony, and Sony's not really doing anything. These guys, these guys need fucking video games. Is what I'm saying here. All right. Uh, let me see here. I got some... All right, take... Uh, we're about an hour in. I'll take a few minutes to read some more Super Chats, uh, and we'll continue along with our expectations of what the fuck's going to happen at E3 other than terrible fucking presentations, which happens every year. It's part of the fun. Uh, from Slanish Butts, uh, Jim is Daddy. From CS, we need King of All Cosmos for Smash. From Suka829, do you think anything could bolster or inspire social media to stop bending the knee? Thoughts on the EA difficulty adjustment stuff? I don't know what to tell you on the social media thing. As far as EA difficulty adjustment stuff, are you talking about the adaptable difficulty slider based on how people are doing in the game? I, it's like a communist approach to difficulty, isn't it? <laughs> It's it's reaching for the lowest common denominator. I want you to... Here's what I think of the EA difficulty slider, if I understand how this works right. <laughs> and why this is so stupid. <clears throat> if they take the worst players and they adjust difficulty based on how badly they are, that means every electronic uh, electronics arts game that you're going to play is basically going to be at DSP levels. I don't know if you ever saw his Half-Life 2 playthrough where the motherfucker didn't know how to crouch jump and tried to position a metal barrel for like 30 minutes to get up a pipe. That's that's what's going to happen to your video games. They're going to be dumbed down to the, the level of people like DSP and 11-year-olds. <laughs> They're going to be a walk in the park. Like, just set a difficulty. You know, tweak your AI and your environments and all that shit. Get it set and have it set in stone. I don't like the idea of a a difficulty slider that's adjusted based on online performance of other people. If that's, again, I think that's what people are talking about. I haven't paid attention to that. But if it is how they're doing it, terrible idea. Uh, from Killer Queen, I don't know what everyone's crying about. Fallen Order looks fine. Like a classic action-adventure platformer for the PS2. Gamers want old school. This is it. I would disagree. Um, the game looks hollow and empty. It feels like you're moving from set piece to set piece with uh, environmental obstructions that are there only to highlight what a force power is. And I think that the way they implemented the force powers in the environment, it just, it feels lazy. Okay, yeah, use force push to push over a pipe that happens to be placed at just the right angle to fall into place to make you a land bridge. Well, I mean, that's a five second, it's a five second stop in the action that doesn't serve any purpose. And it makes me think that the reason you put it there was to remind people force powers exist. 
And if you're putting these kind of environmental hazards in place when you're walking from arena to arena, from set piece to set piece, it makes me think that you don't have faith in your own combat system. Because the reason you've implemented them in such a lazy and obvious way is you think players are going to forget to use them in combat, which must mean that flailing your little lightsaber around is just retardedly easy and you would never need to do anything else. I mean, if I can just hit the A button a thousand times and beat any enemy, why would I fuck around with anything else? It's not like... I mean, I played... There, there were a lot of uh, PS2 Xbox games back in the day that dealt with the psychic powers. There's one in particular I can't remember the name of. Uh, it had a really fun telekinesis system. You pick people up and fling them into walls and shit. It was sloppy. You know, it was glitchy as fuck, but it was fun. This doesn't look fun. It looks slow. It looks trudging. It looks like it's, uh, you know, separated areas of action interspersed with walks down hall or walks down hallways. So that's my take on it. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe it's good. From Dunedin, Son of the West. Can we get a good Star Fox game? Please, Nintendo. <laughs> When's the last time you got a good Star Fox game? What, what did you have? Star, what was the fucking one that they, they reskinned Dinosaur Planet on the GameCube? Star Fox Adventure? Horrible game. Uh, the Star Fox for the Wii U? Atrocious game. When's the last good Star Fox game that you had? I mean, you're thinking the SNES. You're thinking a Nintendo 64. I mean, it'd be nice, but... I wouldn't hold my breath for that one either. From GamerPro. Hey, Jim. You fat niker. Loving your stream about video games, and my boyfriend is going to hate my... Er, is going to hate my gay self because I'm learning this stuff while he's at work. <laughs> well, uh, he hasn't missed much. The proper E3 isn't coming up until tomorrow, the next day, and then a day after that. Right now, it's just a shitty presentation. From Viking Insane. Gamers definitely want a Custer's Revenge remake. Who doesn't want a fucking Indian, of course? From Moderator Marcy, hey there, Boomer Jim. Are you aware that there's a video pitch sent to PewDiePie about kids' movie to stop a school shooting called Cool Cat Stops a School Shooting? There's no way. There's no way Cool Cat is trying to do a school shooter. <laughs> if he is, I hope your movie sucks covers it. From Kawhi J. Chan, Awu, oh hi Jim Sama. These past few years together have been the happiest in my whole life. Your super sexy fun time. Please, will you marry me? Make me the happiest Chan in all of the internet. Sorry, I'm taken. From Girk Garb, a remake of the CDI Zelda games. I think that's all what we want. Read uh, five more here and jump back into the stuff. Francis E. Declan Esquire. I will show you. Or I will show up in Super Smash Melee. Well, Francis, I think we're all looking forward to that. Ninja Work 111. My brother wants to know if Pull was always Hitler obsessed. <laughs> horrible or did it start or did it really start that way with Trump and the alt-right poll is always right and poll has always been what poll has always been and before that it was news from Sublin David Duke and George Lincoln Rockwell for smash Maximus Smith say sir crazy horse Muhammad Caesar the 14th Esquire is a dork well sir crazy horse Muhammad Caesar the 14th Esquire you are a dork and finally rabbit corn well, I fully expected Twitter to do nothing about the dog fucker. They actually suspended him. I know, shocking, isn't it? Who thought fucking a dog would actually get you suspended on Twitter? We live in a different era, apparently. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. You know, since we talked about Bandai Namco, uh, I, I want to talk about this. I cannot be the only one excited for a Destroy All Humans remaster. I know THQ Nordic is bringing back three games. You've got uh, Bikini Bottom, or whatever the fuck it is, a Spongebob one. Never played it. People seem happy about it. Great. I'm thrilled for you. Destroy All Humans? That was my shit. I love that video game. They released a new trailer announcing it. Screenshots have kind of slowly leaked out of what it's probably going to look like. I I'm kind of hyped for it. I mean, they put a nice little coat of paint on it, but the core game was fun to begin with. It's not like they have to do a ton of shit to it. Like, if they sell this for 30 bucks, 20 bucks, perfect price for a remaster like this, I think they're going to sell a good amount of copies. Yeah, CMC, yeah, everybody, fuck yeah. I think it's a, a good approach. I'm wondering if what's happening is they're remastering and re-releasing previous titles to try to, you know, turn a profit, make some money to actually start development on new stuff, which would be a smart way of doing it. You know, show people, hey, these are the games uh, you really liked, we remastered them, buy them from us, 
and then we're going to use the profits to put into development of new titles. Destroy All Humans was fucking fun as shit. It was a great little sandbox game, going around, destroying shit, sucking brains out of people, fucking with humans. It's a fun game. I, you know, the sequel was okay-ish. I had some issues with it, but whatever. I take both of them, to be honest with you. And the SpongeBob one, people seem happy about. Again, I've never played it, so I don't know how good it is. I think they have a third game coming out, too. I'm not sure when that drops. Maybe it's already dropped. Uh, but So there should be three of them. But I know two of them for sure. So I'm, I'm hyped for that. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, what, what else do we have here? I, well, ooh, well, no, who should we go to next here? Yeah, why not? We'll talk about Ubisoft. We'll talk. Let's talk about Watch Dogs. Where is this fucking tweet? Oh, I got him. Uh, there we go. So, Watch Dogs 3 is coming out, called the Watch Dogs Legion. God save the NPCs reveal at uh, E3. Oh, boy. Oh, you know it's going to be good when they start memeing you. All oh, those fucking NPCs set in a post-Brexit England. <laughs> That's, I'm not making that up. That's their marketing material. Of course, <laughs> they're, they're treating a post-Brexit England like it's fucking V for Vendetta. <laughs> You've got to go wake people up. I hope Nigel Farage is the fucking big boss. I hope I hope Nigel Farage is like the big bad enemy at the end of the game. And you have to milkshake him to death. <laughs> How much do you want to bet that's going to be a fucking mechanic in this game? How much do you want to bet you can milkshake? <laughs> you can milkshake your enemies in fucking Watch Dogs Legion. Oh, I see the excitement. Oh, yeah, we all know how Watch Dogs is. They tell you it's going to be one thing, and you get something completely fucking different in the end. It's nothing but bull shots and bullshit. Oh, we're going to have dynamic lighting. Oh, interactive environments. Tons of NPCs. Look at the fabric physics. Look at the wind physics playing against all the different environmental objects. And then you get something that looks like it came out on the fucking PS2 at the tail end of its lifespan. <laughs> they show you all this advanced shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at those facial animations. Oh, my God, this is so next-gen. And then when you get it, it looks nothing like that. Though I have to admit, I love these faces. <laughs> I think they need to be implemented more. I don't, the, the top, the second from the left on the top, my favorite. It looks like she, she, he, it, I don't know, uh, smelled something horrific. Maybe got brapped at. <laughs> smelled something terrible. So God save the NPCs. I, I know it's going to be terrible. This is what I expect from Ubisoft, of course. Uh, awful shit that nobody asked for. Terrible shit that nobody wants. I, I have no hopes for them. It's always some weird shit. It's always some weird French-Canadian musical act, an LGBT number, and then they show like two games, and then it's just disappointing. I don't know what to expect from it, but I don't have a lot of high hopes. I don't have any expectations. The reality is going to be painfully disappointing. <laughs> I can already suspect the grade is going to be like a D. Not a lot on them. I'm going to be honest with you. Now Bethesda, on the other hand. Oh, we've got some shit to talk about there. Our boy, our, our big boy Todd's been running his mouth a little bit. Making some new promises for everybody. Bethesda's Todd Howard says Elder Scrolls 6 will be playable for a decade. A decade. Yeah, you're gonna play. You're gonna play the game for ten fucking years. What is with this dude? And always, always saying shit that never. I don't believe him. Anything he says, the opposite is true. If Todd Howard tells you that game is gonna be playable for a decade, it means you're gonna be done with it in an hour. Where's Where's the Todd Howard sizzle reel? I think it's here.
works. <laughs> I was the kid, I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever, and uh, the other kids in the block would say, you know, I'm going to play quarterback for the Cowboys, and I'd be like, I'm going to make video games, and everyone's going to play them. Like, you dork, go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? <laughs> yes, I was in the chess club. Random spawn. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't take anything this motherfucker says for real. If you believe something Todd Howard tells you, you are you have brain damage. He lies through his fucking teeth all the time. There hasn't been one game, not one game where this dude was just straight up honest with people. It's always an over exaggeration. It's always just fluff and bullshit coming from our boy. Who's laughing now? That's right. Todd's laughing now. I'm gonna make you buy your 18th fucking copy of Skyrim. Jesus Christ, Todd. What am I looking forward to? They have to address Fallout 76. That was the biggest goddamn gaming disaster I've ever... In recent memory, so many things went wrong with that. A glitchy, fucked up game that was unplayable, which is... We all expect that at this point. When is that ever not the fucking case with a Bethesda game? But a terrible game, terrible, terrible fucking video game, built on an outdated, antiquated piece of shit engine that <laughs> creates its own fucking game-breaking bugs in the first place. You've got collector sets where they're telling you they're going to give you a canvas bag. You get some nylon backpack instead. And then the customer support tells you, fuck you, we don't care. Fuck you, thank you for the money. Go fuck yourself. We're Bethesda. And then... When they let you complain about it, you buy the buggy game, you buy the buggy collector set, you don't get what you paid for, and when you're allowed to complain about it, it leaks all your personal information because the website's not fucking secure. It was a disaster straight through. There's no good aspect of it. Terrible, terrible review scores, terrible sales, terrible game. He has to talk about it. Now you've got Starfield, Elder Scrolls Six. Does anybody want to play any of these future games if they are built on the same slapped together Frankenstein nightmare fucking game engine that that is just it's a decade past its fucking prime and it's time to move the fuck on? Maybe spend some of that internal development and financing and update your shit. He has to talk about Fallout. He has to talk about the future of their engine. <laughs> you know, I expect we're going to hear more Elder Scrolls new obvi er, news, obviously. Starfield news, potentially. I, I don't know what else really to expect from them other than some sweet little, sweet little lies whispered in our ears as we're told everything's okay and we should buy the new edition of whatever game we've already bought 20 times from them. Maybe there'll be a new mobile game because everybody loves mobile shit. Got to throw some of that out there. It works so well for Blizzard with the Diablo announcement. <laughs> What's, are you too poor? You don't own a phone? Brilliant. 
Now, that's that, those are my hopes and expectations. What's the reality going to be? Same as last year. A stupid fucking presentation with three or four games, a boatload of promises that won't come true. No accountability for their fuck-ups. No moving past their shitty, wonked-out, broken engine. And, and a mobile game thrown in for a good, a good extra fuck you in your ass. Still looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I think Ubisoft, or Ubisoft and Bethesda have the worst presentations as far as just the host they choose and the way they present things with the weird little, just, they, they interject weird little acts. Musical numbers and uh, <laughs> just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But they're like the last holdouts of what E3 is really all about, which is just cringe-inducing, terrible fucking presentations. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. So what do we cover? We covered Xbox, Bethesda, uh, Ubisoft, and Nintendo, Square Enix. I'm not expecting a lot from them. You know, I, uh, what happened to the Final Fantasy remaster, Final Fantasy VII remaster, that they're splitting into 18 fucking parts? It feels to me like they're going to delay it, and then they're going to announce that it's cross-generational. You know, PS5 is supposed to have backwards compatibility where you can play PS4 games. So it feels like, to me, they're going to say, yeah, we're going to release the Final Fantasy VII Remaster Part 1 and 2, but it's going to be at the tail end of the PS4 life, uh, span, life cycle, and it's going to be a simultaneous launch on the PS4 and the PS5. And, you know, whatever version you buy, you can play on the new console. Uh, that's what it feels like they're going to do. Outside of that, I really don't know what to expect or care uh, uh, about uh, Square Enix. Hopefully they'll address uh, banning people for asking why they're charging $10 more for Octopath Traveler on fucking Steam when it's a digital game that doesn't make any sense. You have to up the price like that. Uh, but I doubt we'll get that. I doubt we'll get an explanation for why they're doing that. Uh, PC gaming show, I expect nothing. But I, I, I tune in. I tune in to watch it uh, just because the host is, he's tolerable. I don't mind him. I, I never really expect anything from the PC gaming show. And so I'm never really truly disappointed. And Devolver, I expect, let's say, a 20 to 30 minute skit, uh, you know, highlighting some crazy shit. Uh, maybe get, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a guffaw or a chuckle out of it. And that'll be that. So, I mean, that's really what you're looking forward to. Uh, you've got, uh, it's basically split up into three days. Uh, I believe it's uh, Xbox, Bethesda, and Devolver tomorrow. PC Gaming Show, Ubisoft, and Square Enix the day after. And then finally, Nintendo is on the 11th or the 12th. I don't know if that date's right, but it's the very last one. The Nintendo Direct will be the very last one. My plan going forward is to stream the three presentations tomorrow, the three the day after, and to cover Nintendo. I skipped EA. Nobody cares about FIFA. Nobody gives a shit about Madden. <laughs> Who cares about sports ball? I can't take it. I've streamed EA for the past four years, and every time it bores me to fucking tears. It's the just... It's not even that it's the worst presentation. It's just the most fucking boring presentation. Sadly, Sony's not involved, so... I don't know what's going to happen with that if we'll get any news from Sony. But, um, yeah, that's that's what your E3 is looking like. So you tell me, chat. What are you looking forward to? What are you expecting to come out of this? I mean, there's, there, I think everybody's got hopes for one or two games. But, you know, it, it's such a weird position to be in right now with Nintendo talking about hardware revisions, Xbox talking about a new console, Sony preparing to do the PS5. Uh, it just feels like everybody is kind of finishing up the old projects and getting shit ready for either releases on the next generation or cross-generational, you know, dual promotion. So, I, I don't know. I have a bad feeling that maybe the next year is going to suck as everybody's kind of holding back to try to make the most money off the new hype for console revisions or new releases. Uh, yeah, I, I'm seeing a lot of people say Doom Eternal. Uh, yeah, I think we'll get more information about that. Maybe at the Microsoft presentation they have the Halo Master Chief collection that's on PC right now with no release date uh, set and no definitive price. So, you know, maybe they're going to say, hey, hey, uh, the Master Chief collection is available now. Like, it, it, we're, we've, we've released it. It's up and available right this moment. Maybe they'll pull a Nintendo. 
Nintendo does that a lot during their directs. They usually be like a game, like one or two. Uh, I think they did that last time with Fortnite, where it was like, hey, Fortnite's on the Switch. By the way, you can go play it right now. So maybe Microsoft will try that. I mean, that's something potentially to look forward to. Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, yeah, you know, I know people had issues with the <laughs> with the aesthetic of the game. I, it looks like it'll be fun to me. I don't know if they can deliver on the amount of hype they've been promising, but it, it'll be one of the things to look forward to. I agree. Bloodline 2, you know, I, I I don't know. Uh, you know, on the one hand, with Bloodlines, uh, they had mentioned that they were going to implement some kind of a new system where you'd get, um, what the fuck did they call it? Like, traits and abilities based on who you were, whose blood you were drinking. So, like, if, I, I don't know how that works. I could think of many ways to implement it to make it funny or at least somewhat entertaining. Like, if you're sucking the blood of hobos, you suddenly get STDs. <laughs> If you're sucking the blood of an alcoholic, you're suddenly a lush now. Like, are you going to get their addictions and vices? If you go after bodybuilders, you're going to suddenly be motivated to get in shape. I, you know, there's a lot of ways they could work that potentially that might make it interesting. Uh, but it's so early right now as far as the news for that game. I, I don't know. Baldur's Gate 3, yeah, they did show that off on the Stadia stream. Uh, it's not exclusive to Stadia, uh, but it is coming out. But, you know, from what I saw, it was just a CG trailer. I want to see some gameplay. Skate 4? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Skill Aids? Is that what you're going to call it? I like that name. Bloodlines to, or Bloodline 2. Skill Aids. Maniac Mansion Remastered. I've heard nothing about that. Grand Theft Auto 6? I, I don't know. I, we could get shit that comes out that's complete, you know, a bombshell release. Microsoft, again, is they're in a really good position. Not only can their cloud gaming service come out and make Google look bad, but without Sony showing up, they basically get all the third-party exclusives to show off themselves, as well as their in-house studio shit. So, I mean, like, Microsoft, this is your year not to fuck it up. Like, this is the one year where everybody's watching just you, and you could do an amazing show if you really put the effort into it. If they, if they fuck this up, they have nobody to blame but themselves. They're really standing on their own right now. A uh, Tetris 2020, yeah. Half Life, a uh, Half Life 3. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Half Life 3. You know, I got the I got the perfect response to that. Let me pull this one back out of the the bag. Uh, where is it here? If people think that's gonna happen, I think that everybody thinks that's gonna happen every year. But Half-Life 3 is never, it's never happening. Not a chance. It's false. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's a total fabrication. This one was invented by a writer. Uh, just like Left 4 Dead 3 probably is never happening. When they had the released, what was it, the leaked uh, assets that came out from Half-Life 3 that, or not Half-Life 3, uh, Left 4 Dead 3. They were like six or seven years old, and then it just never went anywhere. God, I, I want to play more Left 4 Dead. I don't know what the fuck ha or what the fuck happened with that franchise, but I don't think we're seeing it again. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's gone. It's done. Okay, we're gonna pull the report card off the screen. So uh, there you go. I mean, that's kind of what we're looking at going into E3. There have been some leaks. We got three games essentially leaked, uh, which is the Nino Kuni remake and release on the Switch, uh, Elden Ring which is a new FromSoft game, and a new Tales game. Uh, probably going to see all three of them, one at the Nintendo uh, Direct, and then the other two probably at the Microsoft show. Watch Dogs is coming out. THQ Nordic has already released information about a Destroy All Humans remaster, as well as a Bikini Bottom remaster. So, I mean, the, the, some interesting shit has popped up. What's going to happen? You know, what new stuff is going to pop up? I have no idea. But I tune into this shit every year, I have a feeling it's a dying thing. We probably got maybe another five years of E3 before it just doesn't exist anymore. Everybody's following suit after Nintendo. Nintendo started doing their own direct thing. That's done really well. Sony now has jumped ship and is copying them. <laughs> right? Unheard of. When has Sony ever done that before? I'm sure Microsoft and everybody else will follow suit. So, you know, uh, this, is, this is not going to last forever. Our poor little E3 started out, was so great. Everybody spent obnoxious amounts of money and horrible advertising. 
We all had good fun enjoying it. And now it's a dying thing. It's just gonna, it's gonna go the way of the dinosaurs. And all we'll have left are YouTube videos for people to watch and remember the good old days when video game companies embarrass themselves after spending millions of dollars trying to do great marketing campaigns. Uh, yeah, I see people saying spam bots. I <laughs> just, I, I hear you. I'll try to have a system in place for next time. Uh, here's my suggestion. Uh, don't click the link. <laughs> it's probably going to fuck your computer up. That would be my suggestion for this. Okay, you know what? Let me let me jump over here. Uh, where are we? No, one second, chat. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, that will conclude our little our little pre-stream for E3, our little day zero, if you will. Stole that from DSP. Honk snort. He knows what he's doing. I'll uh, address the super chats that I missed. I'll get to them all. Uh, if you were coming just for this, just to talk about the shit, uh, you know, stuff coming up, a little bit of video game hype, stream's pretty much done. I'm going to do the super chats. You can stick around for those. Otherwise, I will be streaming tomorrow with each of the three press conferences, uh, and then the day after with those three, and then finally when Nintendo does its direct. And then that's it. E3's over. We got three, four days of it, and then it's uh, and then it's gone. And I don't have great hopes for what next year is going to be like. So thanks for joining me. Uh, let's let's do these super chats. Uh, hold on one sec. I'll go through the list here and make sure I don't miss anybody. <laughs> People still talking about the links. Yeah, I wouldn't. Just don't click them. You should be good. All right, from Mario Kart 13, Google Stadia exclusive. Monopoly. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's the one all the kids want. Give me some of that. Give me some of that Monopoly. Caleb Lambright, my 16-year-old cat is sadly dying. He is on my lap. From effeminate Shogoth, Reach PC and Cyberpunk 2077 better than everything. From Fash Bandicoot, press P to piss in Todd's lying Jew mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know, I Todd Todd has a habit of exaggerating pretty much everything. From Hadolf Eitler, donate money or even a manual typewriter to Jim for your only hope for a future. From Leadmaster, Jim, you must discuss Dr. Pizza. Another place in time. I'm just doing a video stream. Uh, Dr. Pizza, I'll touch on it briefly. I'll tell you what. Uh, Dr. Pizza was a <laughs> was an Ars Technica writer, a journalist. Uh, had a lot of hot opinions about people that play video games and like anime. And turns out he was, what was it? He was accused of. All right, let me be very careful here in case Dr. Pizza wants to sue people. He was accused there are allegations that he was banging a 13-year-old and trying to set up a date with a 9 and 11-year-olds. <laughs> He's been arrested. And his timeline of 210,000 tweets has some real hot fucking takes. So if you get a chance, go check that out. It's uh, worth a good laugh. From Icarus, Daddy Jim tears away Todd Howard's master reveal the 200 hamsters controlling the newest biomechanical land vehicle. From Medicare's Lunicorn Archives, When's the first execution stream 2.0? I may do one of those in the next few weeks. From Sus, thoughts on Death Stranding. You know, I don't know what to make of the fucking game. I'm just going to wait till it comes out, read a few reviews of people that I actually trust, and uh, play it by ear. From Lord Chippy Dip, you hear about, e you hear about Ralph drunk yelling at his sick mom? <laughs> no. No, I haven't. I'll check. I guess I'll check that out after the stream. From Johnny Depressed. Left-handed people are the most oppressed minority. From Francis E. Declan Esquire. Where's my manual typewriter, Jim? Uh, I'll make sure to send that to you in the mail. From CMD, don't be Rama Rama. From Gibbs, what are you most excited for and what do you want to see this time around, Jim? Honest to God, I just, I, I would like to see a new F-Zero. Like, that's the one game franchise I actually kind of give a shit about. <laughs> I want a new F-Zero. That's what I want. That's what I'm excited for. What do I want to see this time around? I want to see Todd Howard have to apologize for Fallout 76. That's that's what I want to see. From Just Call Me Mr. Glacier, or Just Call Me Glacier. Jim, have you heard about the anti-Trump blogger who turned out to be a hardcore, hardcore soy drinking? He goes by Dr. Pizza on Twitter. Yep, we just talked about it. 
from Augmenter. You don't strip petrol from a can. From Efwafwa Jidoi. I butchered your name. I don't even know how the fuck to pronounce that. Talk about the Ars Technica pedo gym. Also, you are cool. God, yeah, people are apparently very interested in uh, Dr. Pizza. From Rocket Insano. Let us praise the new leader of the alt-right, Philip DeFranco. Heil Fuhr Franco. May his reign be bloody as it is devoid of color. From Nick Gurr. Any games that interest you for E3? Uh, probably Cyberpunk. Uh, you know, I'm kind of interested in what the new Halo will be like. Um, you know, I, I don't have a ton of hopes coming in. I guess Elden Ring uh, has me a bit interested because I do like Souls games. So just to at least see what it turns out to be like would be something I'd be interested in. Uh, from Fuckboy, thank you for your videos. Love it. Atari Dad. Jim, look up channel called Young Defiant. The guy is a total all call. He might be a troll, but I doubt it. From Lane Broadwell. Pass the bike. Race car now. From Farron. Stop smoking. Who will entertain us after cancer gets you? From Wexley Yarway. Jim, what was the YouTube poop that played at the beginning? Uh, let me see if I can find the name for you here. Ah, uh, shit. Where is it there? Um... Oh, the Lawbreakers one? I, I I have to... I'll have to dig it up. I found it just from a basic search on YouTube, though. Um, okay. Well, let me see if I can find it for you real quick. Take a second here. Uh, it should be in history. All right. Let's see if we can find it. That's Todd's sweet little lies. Okay, yeah, that's from a, a YouTube account, Frog3, YouTube Poop, Fuck You by Lawbreakers. Uh, that would be the name of it. Uh, for those, I guess, that were curious. From SS Adel, or SS, or S Sad Polcat. Hey, Jim, please call my mom a Polak Q Boomer. Uh, well, she is a Polak Q Boomer. From Vulcan Du Dinook. E3 sucks, fat booty. Excited for the Destroy All Humans remake in 2020, though. That trailer was pretty dope. That was a good trailer. Rocket and Sano, what's that lack all hue and reflect all light? Uh, Shibby Dog, Levantine Desert People did 9/11. From Joey Jojo, all I want to hear about Bayonetta, or all I want to hear about is Bayonetta 3, Astral Chain, Yokai Watch 4, Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 collection, Resident Evil, and Banjo Kazooie remake or Smash DLC. From Mike the Bike, I'm excited for Pro Jared's reviews for E3. I think we all are. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's going to turn. Maybe he'll send Heidi to the PS... All right, here's what he'll do. He's going to split up responsibilities. Heidi's going to cover half of them, and Holly will cover the other half. I bully my dad. Since Big Tech is basically spit-roasting everyone, we should take uh, the Tonka route and communicate through rocks and smoke signals. From Victor Phantasm, Boss, will you do a stream about the recent things in the furry tribe? When will furries go the way of the dodo bird? Yeah, there's been a lot of furry shit going on. The Blind Freak, I can't wait for Skyrim Smart Fridge announcement. From Slinish Butts, Senpai, notice me, your motherfucker. From Helix 4, Night Shift Alone with Medicare, well, that's fine. Tanner Hunter, E3 might die. Stop, I can only get so aroused. From Slinish Butts again, Soy Tit. Just Monica, hey Jim, I gotta ask, do you ever get recognized by your voice in public? Or do you manage to suppress the cancer aids to mask your voice? I've uh, never been an issue. Cody Rush, hey Jim, I bought my employees crawfish and beer when they got done with that asphalt parking lot job the other day. Then they complained I didn't buy enough beer. Keep up the good streams. I need the entertainment. Well, you know what you do next time? You tell them, hey, I'm sorry you didn't like the beer that I bought you. So <laughs> instead, I bought, uh, what's, what, let's see, what could be an atrocious drink that they'll never complain? You've got to pick something that's so fucking horrible they're thankful for the beers. Like something that's just god-awful. I'm talking some nasty flavor of some fucking monster drink abomination. Something that tastes like fucking cough medicine. So the motherfuckers appreciate the Zimas you, you know, spent money on. From Quintus, why just why? From Elizabeth Bathory, Medicare Sound, brought to you by Sony. From Slinish Butts, Senpai, notice me, you mother ducker. Jam 2, say Keith loved taco gondos. Tanner Hunter, maybe the S or maybe the Star Wars bugs are Republicans or Trump fans. Rocket and Sano, Darth Vader turning into Scorpion is canon. 
from Slanish Buds. Shut up, Boomer. Laugh my ass off. Veggie Bad, AVGN, remember in Star Wars where Luke had to fight a giant spider? Brown Gamer Man, it looks good. From Slanish Butts, are they recording DSP gameplay? <laughs> Killshot Kenny, happy Pride Month from us at EA. Enjoy our Rainbow DLC. Nothing says Fig Pride like giving us money. In our next DLC, you can impeach Sim <laughs> You can impeach Sim Trump. You know, somebody was telling me that there's a heavy modding community in The Sims, and that somebody modded in uh, abortion. Now, I'm trying to think, like, of all the features to add into your Sims 4 game, why would, like, why? Why would you put abortions in your Sims game? <laughs> I, that I legit don't get. Uh, your Enwa, Soy Wars Triggered Order. From DCP, I bet they made the Star Wars game bad solely to try and push the narrative that no one wants single-player games. Once again, a good concept kill to sell multiplayer only. From Slanish Butts, the soy boy or the soy wants the boy. From Mad Mark, Jim, do I watch you or uh, Etika? Well, yeah, I watch Etika. It's probably gonna go crazy. Have a have a lot of fun checking that out. Uh, high energy streams. We're just sitting over here, cancer laughing at some shit. The greatest rogue trader. Was Watson inspired by Doodle Diaper? I think maybe. While begozzled, here's my $2. Thank you. Rational Ryan, how do you fuck up a Jedi game so badly? Is it really that hard to replicate the fun of Jedi Outcast in the modern era of gaming? I, I don't know what the fuck they did. I don't know how they arrived at the situation they're in. From Isaac Cruz, Jim, that's a tactical diaper. From Sleepy, the Sims must face exterminatus. From Becky Mick, your gay voice makes me laugh so much, Jim. From Little Rapper, shilling here, want almost any premium software for just $5 each? Then check out softwaresales.xyz. From Rosali Stella, I feel like EA is like your washed up uncle. From Carnizzle, EA has a pat. Oh, we I already read this one. Okay, I've hit some that we read earlier. Let me skip past those. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, there we are. From James Darnell, no thanks, don't think it's a good idea to buy from Sensor Happy SJWs. Waiting for that Eureka moment, whether it's xCloud or Stadia, or all these current MMO games, Indian giver technology will always was always the plan with these companies. From Gorilla, digital media is one thing, but ST, STDEA is a whole new level of throwing money into a hole. How embarrassing. From Toonie is Tunes. Ross from Accursed Farms is probably screaming to the void over Stadia. From Nick Bilski, starting chemotherapy, or starting chemo today. Thanks for giving me something to watch. Only thing I want is Death Stranding. Not buying a PS4 unless I'm going to die before the port. You know, from what I understand, somebody said it's not exclusive. It's like a, a limited exclusivity. I don't know. I don't know. There's probably a PC version coming out. Uh, as far as, I, I, yeah, I'm on the fence about if the game's going to be good or not. It could be really fucking cool. It could be a really fun game. But I'm so... I, I'm going to let somebody else bite the bullet first and wait like a day or two after it's released so I can see what people have to say about it when they're actually fucking playing it. From NRXL, Stadia, pay us and we'll pay... Or pay us and we'll let you pay us. From Cameron McCarty, answer while you get banned. Favorite Chaos God. From Tropic Thief, I think the only games I've played this past five years have been porn games. Play some Senko, or Sengoku Rants Gym. From that India dude, how many games are going to be let's play, or let's say have unorthodox protagonists? You know, shit. Um, as far as unorthodox protagonists, I I, I don't know. I'm trying I try to think like, what the fuck is really coming out in the next year or two? I have to think about it. Uh, Ninja Work One 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 choice between a thing or a dog or a bullet to the head, or oh I'm sorry, between fucking a dog or a bullet to the head. I don't want to fuck a dog. <laughs> it's not It's not on my priority. Not on the bucket list. Another nobody. E3 is great, but clean your room chat. From Ryu Kirudu. What do you think about the Vox Adpocalypse? I actually already talked about it on a previous stream. Uh, TV Shade. Well, Xbox One was $400 with benefit of having uh, to be online where? I guess Stadia is 129 with the same benefit. Yeah, probably still going to fail. Comcast will not change that cash cow. Yeah, they're they're ridiculous if they think the ISP is going to change data caps just because the Stadia comes out. From Tree Master Bob, it's funny that the companies pushing the whole single-player games are dead are the same companies 
that strangle the life and creativity out of their titles. From Sock Puppet 1, I love Adria Richards, the best E3 waifu. From ASXCE311, what do you think about Borderlands 3, Jim? You know, I played Borderlands 1, I had fun. I played the second one, I had fun. I don't want to play anymore. Like, Borderlands, I get it. It's a fun game. If you like it, great. Enjoy it. But, like, I'm Borderlands out. I get it. I get the whole... It's like every game is the same fucking game. I, I just don't want to play anymore. I don't want to play any more Borderlands. I'm good. I'm sitting the next one out. From... Oh, I read that one. Uh, SS, look here. Uh, look here, listen. General, we need to preserve the uh, Minion Ethno State. From Eduardo Ramirez... Pick ups to my pay nibbas in Jigga City, Ka Gang Gang. From Cozy Paladin, look up Twitter user Marshall Fox 22 on an archive site. It's some furry who bragged about cream pieing their dog and posted pictures. Disgusting freak. <laughs> yeah, we need that at E3. Furries banging their pets. From Mahola Viking, will you be the subject of a Black Mirror episode? I don't know why I would. From Alberto the Chosen One, Barbarossa. It shows agony for me on similar games I played when I searched for Super Naughty Maid on Steam. <laughs> From Ogurk, was getting caught part of Griffith's plan. My cunt monetized Joey Jojo. I watched a lewd VR video that had a Kate Dennings lookalike. It was nice, but I want a Virtual Boy emulation so I can play Wario Land and Jack Brothers. From Eduardo Ramirez again, when's a school shooter VR game coming out? Retards rise up. From Linus L, could VR bring back arcades? I, I don't. Here's my concern about like a VR arcade. I, I, I'd imagine wearing those headsets pressed up against your face. It's gonna get sweaty and stink. And I don't want some fat dude, who doesn't wash, wearing that thing for like 30 minutes and vigorous exercising, and then I'm the next guy up, because it's gonna smell and it's gonna be wet and damp. So I don't think a VR arcade would be would be the way to go. I'm going to be honest with you here. From Maximus Smith, America needs a Sargon clone army. Deadpool, you can do most of this in Blades and Sorcery. From Blue Satoshi, Robo Recall is kind of like Boneworks, but for the Rift. From Slinish Butts, I love VR spankings, Daddy. Make me your pay pig, Daddy, Jim. From Unplugged Sky, hey, Jim. For 10 Superberries, can you tell me sweet little eyes? Bing, bing, wahoo, potato nippler. <laughs> I'll give you, you want a sweet little lie? I'll tell you a sweet little lie. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six will be amazing, and you're going to play it for a decade. There you go. From Rabid Corn, why? Wow, fully expected Twitter to do nothing about the, oh, we've read that one. All right, I think I've caught up to a few here. One second. Uh, where are we here? From Enphis, or Enphius, uh, deprogram yourselves, watch Europa, The Last Battle. Video Game Snake, Raimu, and Crash will be in Smash. Screen cap this. From Scoop, Gunt, and Kreisky, aim for the battle. From Tasuka 829 my Irish gentleman. Dot hack, so ka sa. I'll pay extra since I'm a patron. Thanks for making me not feel insane. From Walter Alucard, Darkside Phil for Smash Ultimate. His final attack is a five-hour begging video. From Massive Damage Gaming. Varric Xenos, I am cucking you while you cry on the couch doing meth. Now that you've been fired from Ed, enjoy Love Shy Life, two incher. From Malcolm from the North, Fallen Order looks like it should have been called The Force Unleashed 3 with how dated the gameplay looks. The Tales game leak looks better, and that's just screenshots. From Mr. Zeke Blowenstein, Cool Cat Stops a School Shooting is a real thing. Dustin D. Hayes, is this Star Wars Fallen Order or Starship Troopers? with a lightsaber. From Giga Uwu, will you ever make another video episode of Deviants? Uh, yeah, we'll probably get back to it. From Malleable Tick, who cares about Destroy All Humans? I'm more excited about the next Silent Hill Pachinko Machine. Uh, aren't we all? From Video Game Snake, Cool Cat Shooter Movie was originally going to be Mumkey Jones as the shooter. Derek stole thousands from his fans and has re or rebooted it thrice now. Rust Daddy, Mumkey Jones was going to be Cool Cat's school shooter, but Cool Cat chickened out. So Mumkey made his own version. From Cake Knight, you think they'd reboot the Prince of Persia franchise? I'd like to see another Ninja Gaiden come out, too. You know, the, the original, well, which one? There was one that was not that great. 
I think the first two Prince of Persia ones were pretty fucking good. The third one was a little iffy. Uh, the chariot sequences were a pain in the ass. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing those get rebooted. From uh, Marl Karks, Watch Dogs The Eternal Disappointment. Megas Killer X. I really hope they keep the brief NPC descriptions for the new Watch Dogs game so you can purge undesirables. Uh, from Villy, uh, Don't Believe His Lies. Scott TJ, I still play New Vegas and Skyrim, but that's because of mods. Rust Daddy, tell me more lies, Todd. From Pain Train, Furions Rise Up. From Noe Abyss, when Todd Howard says a game is playable for 10 years, he's including the re-releases over the next 10 years. From Slanish Butts, thank you, Tiny Todd, very cool. Ninja Works, what was a the lie there? You could go up the mountain. <laughs> From Fran Power, modders will fix and keep it alive as always. Massive damage gaming, er, massive damage gaming. I miss the Todd who made Morrowind with MK. From Cake Knight, Miyazaki would bust the latest, would bust the fattest nut if he got the Berserk IP. Imagine a Dark Souls like Berserk game. Hell, a Doom esque Berserk game would be pretty awesome too. From Massive Damage Gaming, Todd was honest about Morrowind, Jim. COC Todd Test. Grayscale played. Uh, what do you think of Todd Howard versus Chris Roberts? Unlike Star Citizen, Bethesda games come out. That is a fair point. From Fuzzy Wuzzy Got Milk, what do you think about Doom Eternal? Doom 2016 metal as fuck. You know, Doom Eternal could be good. Uh, you know, the first one, it was okay. I, I know a lot of people dug it, so it looks like it's going to be more of the same with, uh, I guess, more dynamic movement and acrobatics. So if that's, like, something you're looking forward to, awesome. From Christian Wordy, Sony more like S.J. Woney. Well, not a penny for me. The GG guy, as it's coming up, the director of GDQ used to host a modding site I was on. A hacker once found an email of him saying he had been feeling gender confusion. Suddenly the dilation stations make sense. From Lustamato, Halo Reach was my shit back in school. These bots in the chat are annoying. Also, how's your Saturday? Well, my Saturday is going well. <laughs> I, will, I will get something done about the bots for next time. Not sure why they're <laughs> why they're spamming porn, but welcome to uh, open chats, I guess. Got a few more to read through, and then we're we're finished up. From Superberries, take these berries, Jim. You're the last bastion of truth. I'll cancel laugh right along with you when the whole thing goes rama rama my potato nibba, the bone zone. But uh, but f u c, hate speaker of a cod. I love the BBC, Miss Meadow Kitty. Do you think E3 will announce Tim Pool's new game Subverse? It's an amazing Mass Effect parody with adult themes and real journalism in it. It is also super centrist. Yes, we should never forget Tim Pool's porn game, Subverse. Copyright trademark Tim Pool. When you think Subverse pornography video games, remember, created, owned, financed, and operated by Tim Pool. From newer 719, the Jedi game is just a demo for RTX. Fuck off EA. From Christian Harper, Remnant from Ashes looks good. Sassy Jim is the best. From Dahlia Spo or Sponge, Jim, what's the name of the intro song? Nice stream. Uh, the intro song is Rama Rama, spelled R-A-M-A. -A. Uh, you, <laughs> you can check it out. It's pretty good. From Massive Damage Gaming, tell my girlfriend Slanish Butts to shut her mouth. Ryan M. came in late. Props for F-Zero. Sarah H., there's a mod in The Sims to cook your baby. <laughs> Moderator Marcy, just a friendly remind, er, reminder. Make sure Jade is still in her cage. Feed her well and let her go out to pee. From Crest Fallen, where did all the tra where did all the trannies on V come from? They've all congregated on Reset Era, and now they plan their attack on your board on a daily basis. Ever since ever since it's been split into two, you're now vulnerable. From Edward T. Riffman, also take my free super chat. ARDS, what was your favorite part of the Fatal Frame series and reboot when? I God, that's that's a hell of a question. As far as a re I just want more Fatal Frames. Like I I fucking miss Silent Hill, I miss Fatal Frame. Hell, I'd even take a new Siren game. I just there's a a, a deep hole where good like survival horror uh, games just used to be. There's not a lot like that anymore. I mean, I think of Resident Evil as its own thing. But like, there's like a niche market that's not being fulfilled anymore, and I'd like something to come back and fill it. Uh, from Edward T. Riffman, quick, we can still save E3. 
We just need to get Donald Trump to tweet about Gamergate. From Rabbitcorn, give me more games like Sekiro and less like Dark Souls. Dark Souls has a lot of BS enemies that you beat easily the second time. Caleb Lambright, I was laughing so hard at the VR stuff. Thanks, Jim. Uh, yeah, again, that's Boneworks if people want to go check it out. Uh, Alienized Godzilla, uh, do you watch G-Man Lives and his FPS reviews? Uh, yeah, I do. I watch his uh, videos and then somebody suggested Civi 11, I think it is. I watch his stuff now too, really great stuff. From S4S Coon, did you see Yong's video about Death Stranding and the drama about Kojima ghosting Justine? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't seen that yet. From Cloudstar, I know this won't happen, but I'm just saying it to put it into the consciousness. Lost Odyssey 2 from Hadolf Eitler and the stream with Gab er, Gabellion. From Lost the Motto, Halo Reach was my shit, and we have reached, I've hit them all. Got all your super chats. Thank you for everybody sending them through. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Uh, tomorrow will be the E3, you know, proper coverage. Starts off with Microsoft. Should be a really good fucking stream. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, again, they're going to have hardware they're going to show off, pricing and release they're going to talk about, the cloud gaming service and how that's going to work, and at least 14 to 20 titles, two of which we probably already know, and three or four we suspect with Halo, Gears, Forza, and so on. Um, yeah, so fingers crossed for that, that it's, probably going to be the best out of the whole thing uh you know the others not so hopeful for at least we get to see todd be a little uncomfortable <laughs> and nintendo's direct probably going to show off some decent stuff too uh i'll put up uh links to times and stuff when those streams go but I, again they'll be tomorrow there are three of them then three the day after and then finally finishing up with the nintendo direct i hope you all have a good weekend enjoy the e3 uh shit travaganza that's coming up, all the gaming news that's coming out. Uh, I'm, I'm sure more sh leaks are going to come out. They always do. So keep your eyes peeled. Probably new information will pop up in the next 24 hours about a bunch of shit ahead of the show. It always does. Always, always does. Let me turn that down. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, I, I will see you all tomorrow uh, for the next E3 stream. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Of course, right as I'm going off. All right, two more here real quick. Uh, hey, Jim, have you ever heard of 4chan Cup? Uh, yes, I have. If you have, which team do you think will make the Summer Cup? Also, Boris is a dirty rigger. I, I have no idea who's going to take the Summer Cup. I haven't, I, I'm familiar with it, but I haven't caught up or paid attention to it recently. And then finally, one last one. Miss Meadow Kitty, E3 is about to announce their best game, Sargon's 20-year plan. It's a fun romp where you avoid raping people and destroy your own political er, political party. Also, can you say the hunter is a faggot and Calibra is gay? Calibra? Calibria. I don't know how to pronounce that. You you have to understand I'm semi-retarded when it comes to saying words and names. You have to spell it out phonetically for me. I'm, a, I'm fucked up on Sudafed and I'm an old, confused boomer. All right. Uh, enjoy your weekend, guys, and I will see you.